Welcome my peeps, my peoples. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video. It'll be greatly appreciated. It's Mary Jane. And let's talk about Basketball Wife Season 7, Episode 12, Bad Romance. It's going down. So now we get down to the nitty gritty with, you know, CC and, you know, Christian and Malaysia. So there's something going on with Byron moving on with this new woman, CC, And CC coming in and taking over Byron's ex-wife place and probably not doing the things like Byron's ex-wife used to do and how she used to bring the family together like big mama and cc's not in that type of space and you know from her the way that she carries herself and the way that she handles things she's very very different from you know christian and malaysia and it seems like malaysia is always pointing the finger at cc to get it together to get it right i don't know if they really don't like you know cc because you know Byron moved on with her and I don't know how Byron and his ex-wife ended their relationship. Was CC the cause? Did was she a mistress? You know, did she do something to destroy their marriage? Because if that's the case, you probably understand why Christian is quick to, you know, dismiss CC and Malaysia is quick to point the finger at CC. But CC also needs to defend herself and stick up for herself and not require other people to do that, even though family is supposed to be there for you. But sometimes you just got to fight your own battle. And then on top of that, Christian is talking about CC live right down the street and Byron and C Byron and CC hasn't seen, you know, Christian's, you know, child, you know, granddaughter. Um, Byron hasn't seen his granddaughter in a long time. I don't know how long. But did this all start because of the Jennifer situation or has this been going on for a longer time? It seems like CeCe's like a fish out of water and this family with Malaysia, Christian and, you know, Thomas. You know, she's kind of not like fitting in because she's not filling the shoes of Big Mama. That's what it seems like. So let's get it together. We go back to the PSA at Jackie's event and it's going down. You know, Reggie's trying to get Tim and he's trying to calm her down because she's told, you know, um, Jennifer, I ain't going to be another bitch again. Call me a bitch one more time. We'll see. We'll see. And so then that's when. You know, Jim was like, I got my pepper spray and she shows, you know, Christian her pepper spray and it's all pink. She was like, I'll spray it. I'll spray it. I was like, oh, no, you better hope she, you better hope it gets right into her eyes and you better hope that nobody else attack you. Because when you spray pepper spray in a building like that, in a small enclosed environment like that, everybody will be affected. And, you know, they can sue you, too, as well, especially they have to go to the hospital or to the doctors. But Jennifer's like, I got my mace. You know, you Jennifer's like, you know, I'm bad and bold. You know, I'm this and I'm that. I got my pepper spray. I'm down. <laughs> I was like, she really got the pepper spray. Like, she brought it. She was on fleek with her special pepper spray. And so then Shawnee is trying to tell Tammy, you better calm down, relax. You know, Jennifer's going to call the cops, put you in, call the cops. You know, she's going to sue you and all this other stuff. Tammy's just like, she's just upset. She's mad. And then, oh, then OG was like, yo, just calm down. And then, OG and Tammy asked OG, what would you do? If she called you a bitch and she did this and that, whatever. And so OG was like, I would knock her teeth out and then keep it moving and go and, and watch the PSA video. I was like, and Tammy was like, yup, yup. Tammy was pissed. You could tell Tammy. Tammy was mad. She was, uh, and you know, um, Jennifer was like, Jennifer was scared too and nervous, but she had a pepper spray and she was hoping security was going to back her up. Jen still didn't show her receipt. She got no receipt. She got no nothing. I'm like, come on, Jennifer, like, man, but Jennifer, she stuck around. She stood in there. Like she hung, she hung in there. She even went to go watch the PSA. All the ladies, everybody went to go watch the PSA. Everybody was there, but except for Evelyn, the PSA was nice. It was really important. It was deep, you know, see Malaysia cry to see how the story really touches her. See the kids talking about all life matter, life matters, black life matters matters and actually putting a message out here about you know african-american on our males getting killed by the police like you know using it on the platform especially in la when you have two recent cases that are on that list that you know um jackie did for the psa is on that list you know so um and that Jackie dedicated the PSA to Malaysia's brother. You know, Malaysia was crying. She still was so overwhelmed. And I also kind of feel a little bit bad, too, because, you know, I know her brother was killed by the police. And I feel totally bad for her, too. But OG just recently lost her brother. And it was like for OG to be in that, in that space, you know, she just recently lost her brother. And then, you know, no one's saying, giving any condolence to... OG, even though it wasn't about OG, the PSA wasn't about OG, but damn, she lost her brother too as well. And she was in that environment. So I know it had the, them emotions, you know, was 
running wild and you know um OG's OG's heart in my opinion. So you have that situation going on and then Christian before then Christian is just crying her ass off. She's crying. She's like, I can't believe this is happening. She's talking to Shoney. Like these are grown women. These grown women are supposed to act better than this. They're supposed to do better than this. Like we're here for an event that is so important and, and they're, they're acting like they're just fighting and they're arguing like oh my god like come on grow up. Like this is why your child act like that because you're a grown woman in public crying over some nonsense when you know what the nonsense is all about. Come on. That's why your child don't listen to you. That's why she's running around like crazy because Look how you just broke down and started crying for no reason on TV. No. And so, you know, Shawnee's trying to tell her, hey, listen, this is just how some ladies act. This is what it is. And, you know, Christian is acting like she has no idea why it, it, anybody's upset when she was asking all the questions. When she wanted to know why Shawnee was mad at, you know, at Jennifer more than she was mad at Tammy. Or what about the receipts? You know, Christian was the one when she came in there, she was telling Tammy, she was telling Malaysia that Jennifer got receipts. Jennifer got receipts. Like she was, she was pulling that, she was blowing that horn about Jennifer got receipts, whispering. And she was like all ready to go for this P P S A that Jackie was throwing because when she met with, you know, um, Jennifer, the day before the last episode, she was like, oh, you got your receipts. Jennifer's like, yeah, I got my receipts. And Tammy keep talking her mess or whatever. I'm just going to have to show them. I'm bringing my receipts. And then Christian went right back to that, to the PSA, and repeated that to anybody that would listen. And then she kept fanning the fire by asking all these questions about what's going on that's when you know shawnee was like well jennifer's right there ask her so she was fanning the fire if she didn't want to talk about anything negative or anything that can cause any drama she would have kept her mouth closed and her head up and swallowed her drink but she didn't do that she was out here caping for jennifer and wonder why it went bad she got malaysia worked up she got tammy worked up she got jennifer worked up and everybody else in the crowd worked up too as well and she got herself worked up and she started crying a river of tears because she probably felt guilty like you know what I kind of like started this mess because I came here and just kept asking questions after question after questions and it didn't go the way that I wanted to she thought that asking all her question was going to go towards Tammy negative and people were going to kind of like gang up on Tammy or point the finger at Tammy but it didn't happen that way I don't know if she actually wanted that to happen but if she wanted a peaceful event she should have kept her mouth closed and stopped asking questions and she kept going on and on. I was like, you've been in this mess with Jennifer. You've seen Jennifer talk about CC fight holla, 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 and then accuse you of not telling CC the truth, that it was just a joke. And then Tammy trying to talk to Jennifer to calm her down, to get out the room and the drama. And she told Tammy that she got it together. She got it. She don't need no help and all this other stuff. So miss me with that, Christian. Take them, take them fake tears. You just got nervous. You got really scared that your position was going to be taken away or something like that because there was no reason for you to cry because you've seen the show you know the show Malaysia coached you on the show so don't act brand new um you could have just said I'm crying because I'm stressed out with my baby my my little daughter's driving me crazy I don't know what to do with her but I want a son and I can't handle the first one so I don't know and I need some help and that's what you should have did but instead of crying and Jennifer wasn't even crying Jennifer's looking at her like oh you Jennifer even called you know Christian a cry baby when she met up with her the next day I was like oh no so, but Jackie PSA was very good it was very enlightening it was nice it was decent and I'm glad they showed it on the show it was it was a really good moment and so you know um so then the next day um, <laughs> so now we have Christian. Christian is, um, getting a nanny and the, the nanny's from Louisiana. So she was hoping the nanny was good, but you know, Christian, if you're looking for a nanny, you put out specific things. I need a nanny that's vegan certified that knows vegan, uh, a nanny that does this, that has these certain criteria. You just don't put an ad out on Craigslist and hoping the first person that walks through the door is the best person fit. And then on top of that, it's like, you looked at that girl and you just prejudged her. It's like, you had that stank look at her like ugh. like and then you was so like disheartening and so like you know kind of like rude and belittling because the girl didn't know about vegan this and that and she didn't know the stuff that you was using if you really want a nanny and you want the nanny to be that the way that you want them to be train them train them and that's it it's like it's just that she didn't like that girl look because that girl is somebody her husband might take home take in the bedroom no <laughs> christian is pretty but the girl wasn't ugly and so 
Um, Christian didn't like the way that her daughter's responding to her. And some, in some cases, you know, nannies are walking the place and the kids fall all over. And sometimes it takes time too, as well, especially when a kid is by itself and not used to other people being around them too, as well. You know, even Christian was like, I can't even bring my kid over there to, for Christian to help. So it seems like the other woman that Brian was with, she did more of a job and helping and assisting Kristen with the baby. And it seems like Cece's not doing all that much because maybe they really just are surface friends because Kristen told, you know, um, Jennifer that her and Cece are just surface friends. So like, how do you say that about family? How do you say that about somebody that's really your friend? But it makes sense now to say Kristen is your surface friend when you guys don't really have a relationship and things like that. So, um, and she's not there around and Byron and her don't come and visit your daughter. Um, so it might be a problem. So maybe these guys are surface friends and Jennifer was correct about that. And you was correct about your statement. So it, they came off, they introduced you guys that like CC and Christian are cool, their family, but I guess you guys were faking the funk until you couldn't fake it no more. You only can fake for so long and that's for sure, for sure, for sure. Give any relationship time, you'll tell. Time will tell it or never rush into it. So we have the situation with Kristen and the um, nanny. The nanny's not working out. She doesn't like the nanny at all. But, you know, you put out requests of a certain nannies that you want. And if you have a nanny coming over, if there's certain things that you do with your child, certain food, certain things, you already have a list. You have it printed out. You have it typed. And you ask the nanny they can do this and understand that. You can have charts and boards. You don't have to be. And that way you'll be guaranteed to know what your nanny's doing. You also said, oh, don't be like the Louisiana way woman where you, 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 you give her chicken soup or whatever. But I think it was an issue that she didn't know the juice from the soup that she would make would be chicken. So, you know, she does have a point, but before she got to that point, she was kind of demeaning and she should have picked someone that was vegan, that was in vegan, somebody that was a vegetarian, but you don't have to be a vegan or a vegetarian to know that when you make chicken soup and you take the juice out, that it's still chicken, it's still chicken juice. So anyways, moving on from that, then we have, you know, um, Jennifer, Malaysia and, um, Jennifer, Malaysia and Shawnee. No, we have Shawnee, Evelyn and Malaysia actually meet up and they ask, you know, they ask, you know, Evelyn, how come you didn't come to the, the get together? How come you didn't come to the PSA? Evelyn was like, I was busy. My son was in town. You know what I'm saying? I need to spend time with him and he's way more important than any PSA that's going on. My son, this, my son, that. I was like, damn, your son don't live with you? So that means you and Carl Carfer have joint custody? Or what? You like you don't have full time custody of your child? Mm. I don't know. I, I just assumed that she did have full the way that she was acting is like she has joint custody that, you know, she doesn't spend time with her son all the time. So I don't know how that situation is flowing, but it sounds like damn. And so she actually was kind of like not that she was being negative, but it was like, damn, it's a PSA about police brutality, especially towards people of melanin descent, people of melanin, you know. So, you know, that, that shit can happen to her son, you know, or her daughter, you know, the police. But the way that she just threw it out there, like, you know, her son could have been in the PSA too as well with her like it didn't have to be like the way that she made it seem like it was not important I know her son is way more important than a PSA but I just I just thought that maybe you know she had full custody of her son I guess she doesn't but you know it's all good so Evelyn didn't come because of that so they let Evelyn know that there was a black cloud and you know they used to descri describe Jackie as a black cloud like especially Evelyn so Shona was like yeah that was a black cloud Malaysia like that was a black cloud and I was like who was the black cloud I know Evelyn was thinking that there I was gonna say Jackie but because she used to always get on Jackie for wearing black and no that was like it was you know um Jennifer she came in you know and she, uh, and she was all like she she was all alone by herself like she would like she had like a stank attitude like she didn't want to be a part of the crowd I was like yo and so they was like and then you know um Shawnee was like and then you know Christian kept asking all asking all these questions and we was like Jennifer's right there once you ask her and then she was like the circle all opened up and then it just went here from there <laughs> And went hand from there with her and, you know, Tammy going back and forth because Jennifer tried to start to accuse Tammy of starting the rumor again at the end of the day. Like, damn, Jennifer, you ain't no joke. You ain't playing around, man. 
And so, you know, and so, um, Je- uh, Evelyn was like, wow, for real? And I was like, yeah, she even has spep pepper spray and shit like that and it was like oh no and Evelyn was like she would have used that pepper spray she would have she would have sprayed her because you know Tammy's like an animal she's like a beast you know Tammy's wow you don't know what to expect from her she said she said uh, she said things of those lines like that's what she was really insinuating and you know like Tammy needs to get pepper spray all she had to do was not call her to be word and not lie and tell the truth and or take ownership for what she did Tammy was just wrong because she didn't tell Shawnee ASAP. That's the only thing. And she wasn't even wrong for that because, like me, I would want to know ASAP. But sometimes it takes people a while to tell you because they don't know how it's going to affect you. Or they really want to know if it's actually real or try to wait it out to see if the person that originally said this rumor was going to tell you in the first place. (laughs) So... That's how the situation went down. They let Evelyn know about what was going on. It was like, you know, something got to be wrong with Jennifer. Like, she's like 40 years old and she doesn't have any friends. How she not have any friends? I was like, damn, they're going in. Like, damn, Jenny, Jennifer's like 40 something years old and she doesn't have any friends because, you know, Evelyn was trying to defend Jennifer and say, like, since her mother's gone or whatever, she has to act real tough and things like that. And Shorty was like, you know, um, Jennifer's like Billy Badass over here. Like, she's so tough and so not. When Evelyn was like, well, since her mother's gone, she don't have anybody to protect her. And, her own, and the only person that was left to protect her was her mother. So now now she has this rowdy, rowdy attitude because she got to protect herself now. And it was like, well, she don't got no friends at all. She's like 40 years old. She don't got no friends. How come Evelyn didn't say, well, I'm her friend. Like, she got one friend. Like, come on. Like, what's going on with this situation? No friends at 40 years old? I was like, wow. <laughs> And so then we have Jennifer and Christian. They meet up and basically Christian was like, I'm so disappointed you didn't have any receipts, you know, because Christian was banking on her to have receipts because she told everybody at the party that she's supposed to have receipts. But yet this is the same woman that don't want to see two women argue, but she wants Jen to bring her receipts to the argument, you know, you know, them crocodile fake tears that people be having all the time. And so, you know, Jennifer called to her a cry baby, like, hi, cry baby. You was all crying. Like, I didn't know what to do. And so... They go through that situation and, um, Jennifer was like, I would have liked to show my receipts, but I didn't think it was a time or place, but you told, you know, um, Christian that you was going to have your receipts because Tammy keeps talking her mess. You're going to bring your receipts and you was going to the PSA and you didn't have your receipts in a time or a place. You have never been like a time or a place. Anytime that you want to start trouble and talk junk and get the, get the situation popping and going on, you do like a time and a place. If that was a time and a place, you would have declined to have that conversation when, you know, Christian was asking you a question you you, sh- you could have said I decline to talk about this right now because this is an important event about PSA uh police of uh, police brutality <laughs> I can't speak and so you know she would have did that if she was actually sincere she's actually real about what she was saying she won't wait till she's with Christian to talk about and when has Evelyn I mean when has Jennifer ever waited to be messy like if she had her receipt she would have been up and down with them receipt she would have printed it out she would have had them you know she should have like they said she should have printed them she should have copied them she should have <laughs> she didn't did something she should have been ready and prepared and she wasn't and so you know um Jennifer talks about you know it's in the time and place and I don't think it was the right place to do that and so you know she was like I couldn't really say nothing because Tammy was all in my face listening and she was going woo 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 like that towards you know um Christian I was like damn Christian did you smell her breath did her breath because she started blowing her breath and pointing her finger in Christian's face and Christian was like this okay on that note I don't know if Christian smelled anything I don't know if she smelled the aka dragon breath aka bad breath I have no idea because that's the rumors that's going around (laughs) so she blew her breath all up in her face and so then you know Jennifer's talking about that she's going to go on this date you know this bingo dating date something like that and you know she's been seeing a life coach a dating coach because she wants to date she's been having bad decision of men and she really wants Christian to come with her because Christian you know um is married and already got a child and she makes good decisions and maybe she can help her it's like damn this is more than 40 years old and she's getting advice with this child from this young and that's over at the party crying and shit so <laughs> so um cc so Kristen decides to go with jennifer to this bingo dating thing it was like damn how come she didn't ask evelyn to go i guess evelyn's too busy evelyn's booked and busy for jen because it seems like lately you know jennifer has been filming with 
Christian lately a lot. So she's going to go on this date with her and help her out. <laughs> And then she asked Jennifer, about, uh, what about kids? She want to have kids and this and that. Jennifer said, yes, I do want to have kids, you know, but I'm trying to find a husband first. I was like, damn, Jennifer, you want to have kids. But when you was on a date with Josh, you told him that you don't want any toddlers. You don't want any small kids around. So do you really want kids? Or are you lying to us? This is just a story time. This is just a story that you just telling us. So moving on from that. Um, <laughs> so they leave and, um, you know, Jennifer talking about that, not, not Jen, but um, Christian's talking about, you know, the nanny situation is not working. And that's just, just, that's just going to be the situation with everything. And so then we get to the, um, we get to OG. She's talking to her mother about, you know, trying to get her boyfriend to marry her and be with her and have her children and try to get everything together because she realized life is too short after losing her brother at a young age that she wants to make sure that her and her boyfriend Kwame is on the same page. So we'll see how that situation happened. Um, We'll see what it goes on. It doesn't seem like, you know, her boyfriend's really that interested in being that serious, but they've been together for four years. So somewhat, it seems like it's long term. I think he's really nervous about being on this TV show. Hopefully he doesn't have a girlfriend somewhere else, but, um, <laughs> we'll see what happens with this situation. I'm just like, damn. And so then Jennifer goes on her bingo date and, you know, the first guy, he was just like 26. He just had sex. He's, you know, the other guy, you know, he was a DJ. His name was Damage. And then Jennifer said to him, I hope you ain't damaged. Like, damn, Jennifer, how can you say that when you know you damaged? You damaged goods, baby. And so then she ended up meeting Josh. Josh is a lawyer, attorney, and he had... I, he has his own practice, but his partner, Jennifer, is feeling that. She didn't know if she wanted damage, and she didn't know if she wanted Josh, but she ended up picking Josh because of security. And she goes on a date with Josh, and, you know, she was kind of vulgar on the date, but he said he appreciated because he wants to get between them legs. He seems like he's a paid actor. It seemed like everybody that was at that bingo get together was paid actors <laughs> everybody that was there and the dating the dating coach she's just trying to get her plugs in because she's trying to she's trying trying to make money out there in LA so you know Jennifer and Josh never gonna happen so moving on from that situation I wonder what happened to Malaysia and that older guy that was trying to date her they went out one day he was a good looking guy and he seemed very decent and you know Josh only has one kid he was going to be a prosecutor but he ended up being a attorney and now he does um entertainment law at this time and point I was like yeah she was like I know some criminals you can lock up like you <laughs> like you Jennifer because you done committed some crimes I got the evidence of my video of my previous videos <laughs> anyways just moving on from that just joking about that situation and so you have that situation go on and then we have you know um Byron's having his basketball weekly thing where he um have all the kids come through. Jackie's there, Malaysia's there, um OG's there, and Cece's there, and they question. They're talking about their kids and things like that. Ha ha ha. Woo woo woo. And they talk about OG. Hey, listen, what's up with you? You gonna get a baby? Whatever. They pressuring her, and she's around all these older women. So now she's getting pressured to get married to have a baby ASAP right away with some guy that you know travels all the way around the world. He's ha never really at home. She feels like she's single. And so we have that situation and then they talk about, you know, what's going on with, you know, where's, where is Christian? What's going on? And, um, and so Christian, so Cece feels like Christian, um, that Jennifer is rubbing off on Christian and, and Malaysia was like, no, don't say that. Don't imply that. Cause that's implying that, you know, um, Christian is weak. And I haven't seen, you know, Malaysia really defend Christian to that. I mean, defend Cece in any way, shape or form like that. You know, she's always saying that Cece needs to defend herself and she's been throwing, you know, um, Christian under the bus. So OG agrees with um, Cece. But once Malaysia jumped in and said what she had to say, OG was quiet. She didn't say another word. Jackie didn't say a word. Jackie had her head down because Jackie ain't getting into nobody else's business this season right now. Maybe for the reunion, she going to go ahead. But right now she's trying to mind her business and get through this season because she don't know what's prepared for her at the end. We don't know what's surprising. And right now she's ain't on nobody's radar for anything negative at this time and point. So she kept her head down and that was it. And so 
So Malaysia tells Cece, you got to fix it. You have to be the one. You have to go knock on her door. Go go talk to her. You know, do your due diligence. Do something. Don't you have to fix your family? And Malaysia also says that she feels embarrassed about her, her how her family is betraying and acting on TV. Like they not getting along. Like they ain't got no home training. That's what she tells Christian. So we have that situation go on and on and on. <laughs> and so, you know, Cece just, um, Cece says that she just can't believe the way Christian is acting towards her. She's never act like this way. She never been like the way that she is towards her. But so we know there's some underlying things going on with the family dynamic with Brian bringing Cece into the picture and Cece not fitting in with everybody because she's not actually doing everything that Big Mama's supposed to do and she's not keeping the family together. She's not, you know, having probably events where everybody goes to. I have no idea. But it seems like it's a much bigger situation than just Jennifer. And Jennifer and, you know, Evelyn knew there was some cracks in that case. There was some cracks going on with Cece and um, Christian and was able to pile plow right through them cracks and see and you know when you have cracks and shit they, they spread and it usually opens up and there's a big hole so we'll see how this shit really goes down we really find out what's going on with cc and byron and how does she enter the relationship was she was she a mistress did she destroy the relationship between brian because it takes two to tangle baby and one is in a committed relationship too as well but if you know a man is married you just keep moving I don't know. People do their thing today. Um, not a part. Like, I wouldn't do that to nobody because that's wrong. That's just dead up wrong. And so, you know, um, it's, it is what it is with that situation. And, you know, Thomas and, you know, Christian, they go out. They take pictures with their daughter. Their daughter's acting up. She's wild. She's crazy. She's out of control. They can't deal with her. And there's no way that they can have, they can have another child, either afford another child, be able to take care of another child because Christian is out of her element. She's out of her league and it's just too much. Her daughter don't le listen to her, don't pay no attention to her at all, point blank, period. So they're going to wait on having kids to another time. And so then we get Malaysia and we get Christian. They meet up and basically, you know, Malaysia, Christian was like hi hi and, she, and Malaysia's like you don't have to do that fake shit right here now it's just us you don't have to be fake and so then they get down to the nilly gritty they drink the wine and then you, that's when you know Christian was like yo you know I haven't By, Byron hasn't seen you know his granddaughter he hasn't been around this and that I haven't talked to CC we're like what's going on we haven't seen each other things have just got really off hand and this is some other personal stuff I want to tell you that you know CC texts me and she told me that me and Brian Byron is not going to be going to lunch or dinner with them anymore because, you know, CC always has to pay the bill and all this other stuff. So basically it seems like CC is throwing it up and Christian face that, you know, they're always paying for things for them to go out to an expensive restaurant and Christian and her boy, Christian and her husband, Thomas don't, you know, offer to uh, don't don't pay the bill like one thing you can offer to pay the bill but it's one thing for you to take the bill and you pay for it because when you want to pay for something you're going to pay for it you'll go to the bathroom go talk to the waiter and be like hey listen i want to pay for everybody at dinner so i guess cc's feeling some type of way she want to throw a dig at christian like you know you don't you, you don't even pay for your you know you and you know byron's son you know thomas don't pay for dinner and all this other stuff and you know she has to pay the bill because she's making the money she's the one that everyone calls dumb and stupid and she's doing five dollar holla holla but she's making that money where she's paying for everybody to eat at extravagant restaurants and then, you know christian a cc might feel a certain type of way like i'm paying for thomas to eat i'm paying for you know christian to eat too as well and this b word is going to be all fronting on me and pick somebody else's side like we can handle our business or whatever problem we have in private but in public we stick together but, you know, it must, it's a lot more, that's a lot deeper than just that because it's going to stem from Byron's, you know, wife that he recently divorced or I don't know if the wife passed away and she was deceased and Cece came in the picture and Cece just can't fill them shoes. So then that's when, you know, Malaysia was like, don't let, don't let them, don't let Cece push you all. Go knock on the door, ring the doorbell because it can go both ways. They both can knock on the door. They both can call each other. They both can hash it out like an adult and talk to each other. But, you know, now the husbands are getting involved where they're being separated, which is not fair because whatever issues that they're having, they all need to sit down and work it out before they get on camera because if not, it will be exposed and it looks so negative. And, and you know, and making, you know, you could just think Kristen is so negative towards Cece, but now you can see that there's some underlying 
things going on in our situation, why it seems like um, Christian is so easy to deal with other people than to deal with someone that's in her family or, or that's dating her father-in-law. So Christian says she feels like a bad daughter-in-law. You possibly, well, maybe, <laughs> but, um, Oh, I like, let's see the nitty gritty. What's going to come out with this relationship with Christian and Cece? Because it's like Cece is throwing Christian on Cece. Christian is throwing Cece under the bus talking about they didn't even visit the grandbaby. They ain't been around. And she's talking. She sent me this text that, you know, we ain't going out to dinner and doing this stuff no more because Cece pays for everything. She's making because Cece pays for everything. So, you know, Christian right now is making Cece look like she's real petty and like she's the wicked stepmother. So let's see how this goes down. Peace. I'm out. One love.